Psalms 120. A song of degrees. Now there's many things I've read about this degrees. Some say the when they travel to Jerusalem, the, the climb up the mountain, or there's one that says the ascent of the stairs of the temple. They, they, they know who what it was. But it's a song of degrees, and that continues for a little while in these chapter headings. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. And when distress, that's who you're to go to first. That's the first. God is first. That's the first commandment. Run to God and see if God wants you to run to a doctor or whatever you're going to run to. And God hears. Problem is, God doesn't always answer right away. God is long-suffering and patient. You may get an answer right away. You may not. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. That soul that is the eternal part of you, which in the Old Testament was not circumcised from the flesh, like it is for a newborn believer in Christ today, And he's saying, listen, that part of me that just lives forever, that part of me that, that will have eternity, I don't want it to be with lying lips, and I don't want it to be with a deceitful tongue. And there are some occupations out there that aren't known for lying lips, and they are known for a deceitful tongue. And yeah, you may be an honest one, but what about the other 99%? There are some occupations that Christians do not belong in. Just by the character of a, a Christian to be known as a used car salesman. They're known for shady deals. And, and you being known as a Christian, well, what are you going to be known as as that career? Lies and deceitfulness. Especially politics. Politics is known. No Christian belongs in that mess. Lying lips and deceitful tongue, according to John 8, 44, is the father's Satan. Would you really want to say that you want to be part of Satan's name and work? Yeah, people are going to say things, but it's based upon your character. I mean, it'd be like a Christian being seen walking into a motel with a, a whore. Well, I was going to get, you know, give her money for a telephone or whatever it is, it does not look good. Walking down the street as a Christian with a Coke bottle inside of a brown bag, it don't look good. And Jesus never, ever had the appearance of anything wicked or evil. Matter of fact, Paul says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Just because you're not doing it, you better not look like you are doing it. Jesus said, for whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. You're not committing a, 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 a adultery by physical contact. You're doing it just by thought. And Jesus said it is a sin. If there are people that you know to be liars and deceitful, this right here, deliver my soul from them, you're not to be part of them. You are not to have them as you're in crowd. 
You're supposed to be delivering from them. Well, what if my boss or co-worker, you get along as you can rightfully with them to do your job, and that's it. Paul also says, uh, as I'm not going to quote this verse completely right, but if possible, live peaceably with all men. If possible. But if you got a, if you got a, a work crew or whatever, the, the Jew, they're a bunch of liars and all that, I wouldn't be sitting down and having a meal with them at lunchtime. See, when you ask God to deliver my soul from the lying lips and from the de deceitful tongue, don't you dare go running to them. What shall be given unto thee? Well, let's read on. Or what shall be done unto thee? Comma, read on. Thou false tongue. In Revelation 20 or 21, it says liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Well, does that mean Christians who lie? No, because Paul says such were some of you in Corinthians. But now you're washed. If you are a liar as a Christian, you're going to deal with it, the judgment seat of Christ, as a loss. But liars and deceitful tongues in the context of this chapter are those that are lost. They will get their just desserts at the, at the great white throne judgment. What lies a lie? Every lie is a lie. Every lie is of is of Satan, John eight forty four. Man tries to put little colors on him and little thing. Listen, the fairy uh, the fairies are lies. The tooth fairy is a lie. Santa Claus is a lie. Calling out sick and you're not sick is a lie. Saying you're going to do something and not do it is a lie. And if you are a Christian, you will stand at the judgment seat of Christ as that will be burnt. At the great white throne judgment as a sin that Christ died for you, but you didn't trust his righteousness. You didn't trust in his atonement that will be charged to you. Can you imagine how many lies from birth? Did you know a newborn baby can lie? Once that child recognizes, I don't know who that thing is, but if I cry, they'll come to my attention. And if that child doesn't have a, a, a bad diaper or it doesn't need to be fed, but just cries to get attention, well, the cry, oh, I'm in distress, I'm in distress, come run to me. That's a lie. Did you know that? We are liars by trade. Adam and Eve lied to God. But that lie was called a blame. It was her fault. Well, yeah, it was her fault, but... Why don't you take the responsibility? Cain lied. First two big human chapters of the Bible, Genesis 3 and 4. I don't know where my brother is. We are prone to lie if we are not on guard, if we don't, if we don't guard our mouth and our tongue. That instant when you are caught, and they come to you to find out. Listen, if you you're not on guard, you'll you'll be prone to lying. Sharp arrows of the mighty, with coals of juniper, a fiery arrow. Coals of the juniper, they're they're on fire. And one of the things I read said that with the juniper, it stays lit for a long time. I guess juniper has a thing where if you light it, it'll burn long. That's what they're going to get. 
sharp arrows of the mighty with poles of juniper. When that arrow, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm a product of the TV generation, I'm sorry to say. And I grew up watching westerns, and I don't know if this happened actually in a historical fact, but Indians would, would, in the movies, would shoot fire arrows at a stagecoach, and it would burn the whole thing up. I don't know if that's true. But there, that possibility is there. It's a fire that will destroy all. Listen, can you imagine having an arrow piercing you and then have it burning inside you? During the Korean War, there, there was a bomb that, or a bullet that they would shoot at the enemy. And then once it hit you, it would actually burn. And if the conditions were right, it would actually catch on fire. And you would not only have to dress the wound as a doctor in a mass unit, but in the middle of the operation, you may have to put the, 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 the thing out. It will start burning. What shall be given unto thee? What shall be done unto thee? Thou false tongue, sharp arrows and mighty... Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. I don't think that's what you want. Remember, they had no Novocaine back then. They didn't have any anesthesiologists. I mean, I only feel that there's only two ways you can maybe get an arrow out of you, and if both of them are painful. Woe is me that I sojourn in Meshach. And you can look that up in Genesis 10, 2, and Ezekiel 27, 13. That I dwell in the tents of Kedar. You can see that in the uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Kedar is Ishmael. Genesis 25, 13, another reference. Jeremiah 49, 28, 20. You, you can look at those references, but the thing is, you're not in the promised land. You're not where God wants you to be. And this is a Jew writing. Woe unto me if I am not where I'm supposed to be. You step out where you, where you don't belong, you got woes. And you need to ask yourself where you are today if, if that is where God wants you. Because if you're not where God wants you, you are out of God's will. It's plain and simple. Sojourn means it's a it's a not a long lasting stay. It's like going into a, a hotel. You're not going to live there, but you're going to just stay there for a while. And dwell means to live in the tents of Keter. So you're not just passing through a, where you don't belong. You're settling. You're staying for a while. Woe unto you. My soul has long dwelt with him that hateth peace. Meshach and Kedar. And anybody who is an enemy around you. And this is where we dwell, where Jesus spoke about the, the, the wheat that is amongst the tares. We live, God planted a seed in this, this earth for man, and Satan came along and planted his seed. And when you're talking about the Jew, you're looking at something right now that's going on in the Middle East today, on, on July 22nd, 2014. That Jew is living in a land, and the, you know, the, he doesn't really get any freedom from the Mediterranean, because then you got that little Palestine area there. So the Jew is living amongst north, south, east, and west of those who will not give him peace. Now, had he did what God told him to do and completely destroy those nations, it would have been a different story. But that Jew is living smack in the middle of hostileness. 
Then the run to Meshach and Kedar, where he doesn't belong, Ishmael, the Arabians. He doesn't belong there. I am for peace. And the Bible tells the Christian, and the Bible says in the Old Testament too, you're to pray for the peace in Jerusalem. But when I speak, they are for war. The Arabians, the Middle Eastern, the United Nations. You know, it's okay for Hamas to launch missiles in Israel, but it's not okay for Israel to launch missiles in Hamas. How come all of a sudden, when Israel's attacking Hamas, the United Nations wants to send relief to Hamas and give them food, stop so we can send uh, food and stuff over there? But how come we never read about the United Nations going and sending help into Israel when they're being attacked? See, everybody is against that Jew. And God gave a clause, saved or lost, an individual, a nation, or a group. You, I'm sorry, listen, this is point to facts. You cannot say you are the KKK and say you're right with God because the KKK hates Jews. You ask them, they will tell you they hate the Jews, along with other minorities. But God told Abraham, and God told the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, They that despise you, God will despise. They that will bless you, God will bless. You curse that Jew, and God's going to curse you. God will take care of all those nations that are around Israel today. God will take care of the United Nations. You are to pray for the peace in Jerusalem. The only way that peace is going to come in Jerusalem is by Jesus Christ sitting on David's throne. Even that is only going to be a thousand years. You still got men in the millennium is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. You got to, at the end of the millennium, Satan's going to come up, be loose, and he's going to gather an army, a vast army. The battle against God. I mean, God just sends down the flamethrowers and boom, they're all gone. But still, the only true, exact, eternal peace they're going to get is when they get the new earth. When we get new Jerusalem and the heathen or the Gentiles get the, the, new, the new heaven. But you've got two things in Psalms 120. You've got the liar... And you got those who are against peace. And you got these people who will sit down with a peace treaty and then turn around and just lie against it. Adolf Hitler did that. England said, hey, look what we got. We got this peace treaty. It wasn't even worth the, the ink and the paper was on. So when men come up with these peace treaties by this chapter, don't believe them. The United Nations was set up to be a peace organization. How many wars has it been since their foundation? Too many. If they're for peace, one war is too many. One war. I can name half a dozen since they started. So they are not doing what they say they did. They are a bunch of liars. And the Jew is to say, get away from me. So why is there an ambassador, or whatever you call them, for Israel at the United Nations when they are a bunch of liars and they don't want peace? Why is the Jew there? Why is the nation Israel? They ought to just say, listen, get out of it. You know, you know what America needs to get right? They need to tell the United Nations two things. We're not going to be a part of you because you're a bunch of liars. There is no peace. You're lying about that. And get out of New York, get out of America. You know, we have a president, we have a Congress, we have a Senate, we have laws and regulations of each of the 50 states. 
And do you know that the United Nations is an outside organization of our country has rules and laws and regulations that tells us what to do in some aspects? Why? Who gave them that authority over our country? I don't vote for them in, in the United Nations. I didn't vote for any of them. I wasn't asked anything about their organization, but yet they will put rules over me. You are to stay away from liars, and you are to stay away from people who do not want peace. It's just plain and simple. How easy the word of God is and how hard it is to follow. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow.